Uh, don't you love it? Here we go. All right. Yeah. Did it come on yet? Let's see, let's see, let's see. I think we're on. You see it then? A little refresh action here. There we go, we're live. We are live. All right, let's get some sharing going while we uh, start slaying this. Let's do it. It's going to be fun. All right, all right. All right, come on, computer. Let's work together tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, I know all about technical difficulties after uh, the past couple of days. My kids suck up all the bandwidth, and so I got to tell them to get off their phones and get off all their stuff and you know there's six of them there's six of them running around the house plus whatever else devices yeah that'll that'll do it i uh i have i have gig speed and e even like even with that i feel like i'm i'm sucking up bandwidth left and right like i, I look at i look at how much data i use every month my, my bill's like I mean, it stays constant but I'm, I'm like well over 500 gigs a month like it's crazy yeah i need to up my plan here it's uh definitely lacking for the uh, amount of bandwidth that we all use here. All right, let's get just a little couple more shares here. Sharing here is slow. All right. Let's see if we can get one more share on here. All right. I really got to get someone to do this for me, so I can just start talking. But then you miss everything we're talking about while we're sharing. <laughs> That's all right. It's all good. Here's some background noise. Don't be shocked. We're doing some like straightening up around here, but it's all good. Yeah. All right. It's That's all glad I'm good. Ride at dawn. Yeah, I just finished my ride. I'm like half breaking a sweat here. All right. How, how close are you? Are you? Uh, I have 29 days left. 29 days left with 336 today. Let's see if That's we can amazing. see the comments. All right. Can we see the comments here? We can see comments here. Okay. Awesome. Let me get back on the screen over here. Let me set this chair so I don't flip over. Something like that. How do we do this? There we go. All right. Fix my camera. Okay, good to go. All right, so we are back with another episode of Get Some Fire Live. A fire starts fire, I'm calling it now. We call it whatever we feel like. Um, this is episode 28, 9, something like that. I don't know. Who remembers? It's a lot of them. Mom. It's a lot of them. <laughs> so uh, we got the one and only uh, alternate Slayer. There's a couple Slayers in our group. The Kyle Slaymaker, as opposed to the Jessica there Slayer. Are. Um, there's a lot of slayers in this group. <laughs> this is this one is the official because he's got the name for it. <laughs> but yeah, um, yes, yes, born, born with it. He was born with it. Yeah, I was born this way. So um, welcome to the show, Kyle Slaymaker. Um, all around good dude. We were just talking, saying uh, we've known each other for a while now, but I don't think we really know each other. So we're gonna get to know each other a little deeper uh, over here. He's from uh, yeah. Lancaster, Pennsylvania. That's uh, that's like the Amish country over there, right? That's uh, in that neck of the woods. Uh, I'll tell you what, it's it's not like the Amish country. It is the it Amish is the country. Amish country, right? Yeah, I mean, if anybody's watched that show, the complete garbage show, uh, Amish Mafia, was uh, on a few years back. Yeah, yeah. That was that was in my town. In fact, I, I know one of the one of the cast members. She's she's not Amish. <laughs> really? Not. Oh, it's totally staged. Yeah. No, not at all. Criminal, but not Amish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's it's crazy. All but those yeah, reality shows are uh, alternate reality, yeah. We uh, I, I mean, we, we started talking when I joined, um, and then the the million dollar meetup up there, right by I mean, block from your office. Yeah, yeah, that worked out uh, well. Yeah, that was uh, that was when we first met in person. I think, right? Was that the first time we met in person? Yeah, probably. Yeah, and yeah, uh, I, I walked in and I was like, 
I, I mean, I, I felt like I was so <laughs> in over my head. Like, you're there talking to everybody. Yeah, yeah. Clint yeah. walks in. Yeah, we had a good crew that day. I mean, everybody. Greg was there. I was just like, wow, <laughs> what did I join? Like, I'm yeah, so far yeah. out of my league here. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And here you are. Yeah, nice. What's yeah. I say? Yeah, yeah. Now, yesterday I couldn't spell Apex. Now he's one, you know, so, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, so um, that was a turning point. That was uh, that was a great event. That was nice to have uh, everyone up in my neck of the woods after we go to Texas uh, so many times to get everyone. Especially when I figured out it was around a block from my office, like this really worked out well. And then we had a little pregame at the office. That was cool to chat with everybody. And it was and, cool. Todd yeah. was everybody was yeah, there. Everyone was there. Your dad. It was a good event. It was good. It was cool. And then um, yeah, then we went over and walked down the block to the event there, and uh, we uh, got some fire. So that was good yeah, stuff. Yes, we did. And, then, and we'll uh, be in, we'll be in Texas in, in two weeks, I guess. Yep, coming up again. I'm actually I'm not gonna not gonna go to Ashburn Meet. I'm going straight to uh, MDM. It's too close. I got too much stuff oh, going on. Man, I'm, I, I'm I, it's be killing me, but it's, I did that last time. I went to the Entrepreneur Meet up and then live two weeks later. It's just it's a lot. It's a lot. And then Stacy's got an event too, which I want to go to, but. Stacy's yeah. events are awesome. I don't know if you ever get a chance to go to Stacy Rasky's events. They're awesome. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Miranda's got events going on. I got Everyone's events. Got events. Yeah, so you got an event coming on. We'll Great. talk about that coming up. So uh, yeah. you're a business coach. Um, how long have you been business coach and what, what got you into that? Um, so I, I guess the right the right progression, Brian, would be, yeah, technically I started about three years ago. Okay. Um, I started the Slaymaker Method because I am, have no problem shamelessly using my name um i was i was laying in bed one night uh with my wife and she said how much do you think you've sold over the years and i was like i don't know i don't know a lot she's like no like like take a guess and i started you know just spitballing it uh and i realized like it was it was getting up into like eight figures and she was like wow i'm so proud of you and to think you wouldn't have gotten into sales if it weren't for, for me pushing you into it getting you out of that shitty job that you have. Mm. And I was like, yeah, it's crazy. And then I laid there all night and I was like, why am I not doing something for myself? Like, mm. like I clearly have the the talent here. And I started, you know, sales coaching. Um, but I, I started, one of my favorite books is, is Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. Okay. And if anybody's read it, uh, if they haven't read it first off, um, but green lights are basically these moments in life where the universe, whether it's God, if you believe in God, anything, um, basically gives you a sign like pivot. Like, like, this is what you should be doing, right? Um, and I found that as I was doing the sales coaching, I was also doing a lot of business coaching as well. Like, this is how you build your brand. This is, you know, do this for marketing. Uh, so I was just like, you know what? I'm a business coach, right? Pay attention to the signs and yeah i haven't looked back ever since love it i love it yeah you don't realize how much you know from life experience like you know i look back at some of the stuff i've been involved in you know buying companies opening companies closing companies moving companies marketing companies you know estimating sales i mean i've done it like all and you don't realize how much you know until you really sit back and go wow i've done a lot of stuff in my life you know it's, it's uh, crazy and it, it, it's all green lights, man. It's, it's all a green, green light for me. When I started real estate, it's five years. Like I got my license about five years ago, today almost. And um, you know, I've done tens of millions of dollars in sales already in real estate. And I only really started taking it on full time this year because that green light moment was like, this is where you need to be. You know, the money's coming in. Yeah. I enjoy it a lot. I enjoy the people. I enjoy helping people. And it was like green light. Here we go. So I know exactly what you're feeling with that. It's. This is where I meant to be, yeah. you know. It's 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 fun. It, it was kind of like one of those things I, I drug my feet with, um, you know, calling myself a, a business coach because I, I just I was so proud of what I've done in the sales world. Um, but it was it was actually another. It was one of the goon squad who uh, reached out to me privately and was like, you know, maybe you should start calling yourself a business coach. Because I see you jumping on these statuses, and it might confuse people if you're, you know, doing this, saying that. And I was like, man, I might as well. He's exactly right. Yep. Absolutely right. So yeah, yeah, that's it. You gotta follow, follow your gut, and your gut tells you where to go. <laughs> that, yeah, that's does. awesome. That's awesome. And now that's leading to an event that you're putting on for uh, for your organization, which is pretty yes. cool. Tell us about that. So yeah. Um, Slay Your Life, 
2022 in Las Vegas, December 2nd and 3rd. Um, we've got a, a huge lineup of speakers. Uh, we've got myself. I'm pretty awesome. Um, Miranda Jiggin. <laughs> oh, she's awesome. I mean, if listen, to anybody out there that doesn't know Miranda, uh, she was the very first guest I had on my podcast. Um, we hit it off immediately, but there is no speed on Miranda yeah. less than about a thousand miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've got Jeremy Schreifels, another Apex member, yeah. nationally yeah. touring musician, producer, executive coach. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Josh Good Luther dude. is the MC. Oh, Josh is doing it, cool. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Josh has been a godsend of the event. Yeah. He's helped me out a ton. Um, yeah, Josh, good people. Yeah. Sonia. Sonia. Love Sonia Ray's yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. So, girl. And then, uh, yeah, oh, she's awesome. She's I'm killer. so excited. She and breaks my balls constantly. Two more. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. That, uh, yeah. Two more that are not Apex members. And one is Mel Tice. Um, she is a coach. She was a client of mine who just, I, I mean, quit her c-suite level job to go straight into entrepreneurship full-time hired me as a coach and has not looked back became best-selling author just i mean skyrocketed she's awesome. gonna bring tons of energy awesome. and then uh last but not least we have phil better known as the podcast mogul he's coming in all the way from canada okay he's gotten i i, I his accolades just go on and on and on but award-winning podcast host he's helped hundreds of podcasts whether they're monetizing getting on the charts um, but it's going to be a cool event. Two days in Vegas. We're Vegas, excited. baby. Uh, Can't go wrong in Vegas. Oh, I haven't been there oh, in years. I probably. I, I know. Man, it's got to be four kids. It's got to be almost 20 years ago now. Time flies. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things, right? It's kind of like like that. The, we, we were talking about green lights. Um, it was it was Miranda. Miranda reached out and asked me to speak at her event, the, mm -hmm. the M event uh, in Tampa, which is now ballooned into Tampa, Cincinnati, and the Dominican Republic. Oh wow! Um, which is typical Miranda. Yeah, yeah. Um, go big or go home. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And she was like, you know, you talked about doing an event uh, a few weeks ago when we talked, and I was like, yeah. And she's like, just, just go, just do it. She's like, she's like on the phone with me, like pick a location right now, and I was like, I guess this is happening. I like it. <laughs> right? I like and I was it. like, here's your green light, uh, yeah. and then it just kind of took off so we're excited tickets went on sale tonight awesome awesome we'll throw a link in there for uh, everyone to get tickets for that i'm definitely gonna have to check that one out i haven't been to vegas in too long so that'll yeah. be a, that'll uh, be a trip oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I i love love las vegas so much like i can't wait like my wife's never been there oh wow uh, and we've been married like almost seven years okay so it's been at least that long. No, yeah, because my bachelor party, my buddies picked me up at like five in the morning and took me to Vegas. So. Oh, nice. Uh, but yeah, yeah, not not cliche at all, right? <laughs> I was at, I was there twice. Once we won tickets. I was at an event and they won tickets. We stayed at Treasure Island and went with the wife. I think I don't think we were married at the point. I think it was girlfriend at the time, and um, we went for I don't know three days or whatever. It was a blast. And then uh, well, I don't know, a year or two later, a buddy of mine was going there on a trade show, and he said, "Yo, I got a suite at the Venetian, like." Jump on a plane and come with me. And I'm like, all right, this works. So we had the suite in the Venetian. We were hanging out in the Venetian, and it was a corporate thing. And it was actually funny. He had a trade show going on. I jumped out on the floor, and I'm helping him sell his product. I didn't even know what his product was. They sold digital stock photography. It was a company, Digital Vision, at the time. And um, they got bought by someone else. And uh, I'm out on the floor, and I'm like, I'm like pulling people in, selling them stuff. I don't even know what I'm selling, but it's natural for me to talk to people, you know. So his boss got a got wind of it that I was doing. He's like, like, you want a job, you know? It was funny. So like, but he's like, they were doing corporate events. He's like, listen, you just have to pay your own way at the corporate events because everything's on the company. I said, that's fine. And then his boss was like, no, you work for us now. I'll pay for everything. It was funny. Awesome. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, I love stories like that. We had a blast. Right? It was a green light for you. It was a green light. Yeah, we, we had a lot of fun that yeah, night. Vegas, yeah. Vegas is definitely like a, a three, maybe four day max town. Yeah. Like, I, I can't like, especially now that I'm, I mean, I say older, but everyone's like, you're only 35. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's, yeah. I mean, like I couldn't, I, back when I was in the Navy and I used to go to Vegas as much as I could, like I, I couldn't do one of those trips anymore, but like, I couldn't even do one of those nights anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a pretty, yeah. I think we did like three days, two nights, both times. And, uh, yeah, it was enough. Yeah. You run around like a lunatic and whatnot, but, uh, I'm not a big gambler cause I, I don't know. I work too hard to give money away. So, uh, you know, like, you know, I'll play a little bit, then like you know, I'd rather just sit by the pool and hang out, you know, whatever, go explore. But there's a lot to do in Vegas. It's definitely a oh yeah, town. oh yeah. yeah. 
yeah. yeah. You don't need to just be in the casinos. Yeah, yeah. So you mentioned when you were in the Navy. We forgot to talk about that. Thank you for your service, first of all. Uh, we love our veterans, so thank you for your service. Thank you. So uh, tell us about your Navy experience. Uh, you were in Iraqi freedom and enduring freedom. I uh, was. I was. Uh, it depends on the, the rating this podcast gets, depending on how <laughs> how much detail you want. Um, <laughs> so uh, it, typical Navy experience. Um, I went to boot camp. Like I graduated high school. And before I was even able to walk across the stage, I was gone, right? My, my principal was like, you have enough credits to graduate. Congratulations. I called my recruiter. I was like, get me out. Like, I'm done. Um, so I, I bounced. I went to boot camp. And they said, all right, excuse me. I was an operations specialist. That was my rate. Um, got to A school to learn my job. And they said, uh, fill out your dream sheet. Fill out where you want to be stationed. And I was like, oh, this should be cool. I was like, I want to be in Italy, Japan, or Greece. It's like, this is going to be the best four years of my life, right? So they're like, all right, you're going to Norfolk, Virginia. <laughs> so I was like, well, this shit sucks. Like, who wants to go to Norfolk? Like, this is horrible. I hear that story right, over so and over. <laughs> Everyone's yeah, like, yeah, I want to go I here. Like, here we go like, there. A school. <laughs> a school was in Norfolk, and I hated it. I was like, there's nothing to do here. Um, and then, and I, but I, I made the best of it. I was like, you know, my, my oldest daughter is now a teenager, was just a, a baby at the time. So I was like, all right, well, at least I can drive home. You know, it's only a four or five hour drive. Uh, I was in Norfolk for about four months and I came back to the ship one night and the next day, the captain had an all hands call and he said, Cape, hey, this is the captain speaking. Uh, in two weeks, we are home port shifting to San Diego. Oh. And I was like, what the hell, man? I can't catch a break like this. I don't want to go to the West coast. I'm finally getting used to seeing my, my kid. I'm, t- I'm a, I was a young dad. Uh, then we, we left Virginia to go to San Diego and we hit Panama. We hit Cabo San Lucas. Oh, nice. Let me tell you what, I don't think they'll ever allow the Navy back to Cabo San Lucas. After <laughs> my trip. Like it, it was rough. Like, Oh my God, was it rough? We, we all made fools of ourselves. Like there's still pictures. I pray don't get out. Um, Good and then times. we got to San Diego Oh yeah. Oh, my, I, my wife, like if she, if she had any idea of the pictures that are, are floating around from Cabo. <laughs> um, because that was a few years ago when cell phones were we, in this program. I hit yeah. San Diego. Yeah. And I was like, wow, oh, wait a minute. This is a pretty cool place. Like I can get used to this. And now San Diego is one of my favorite towns. Um, but yeah, operations are active freedom during freedom did a Western Pacific deployment. So I got to see Australia, the middle East more than I care to admit. Cool. Um, Malaysia, Singapore, Hawaii. I was all over the place. It's awesome. Um, and it, it really gave me a, from what I remember of it, uh, a, a very, a very dear sense of traveling, fond, fondness. Yeah, travel is awesome, definitely. There's all these parallel universes that exist out there. We're in our little bubble and we think this is our world and then you travel and you're like, no. there's a whole other world out there, you know? The craziest part, Brian, and if anybody's really traveled, they won't argue me when they when they say this. And I like that I say this after saying I'm a veteran because people will give me less crap for saying what I'm about to say. Um, of all the countries that I've been in, the United States has the meanest people. <laughs> it's it's the craziest thing. Everywhere I went, just people were the kindest, gentlest people. Even in Canada, my buddy barfed all over a bouncer. And I was like, oh, God, he's going to get his ass kicked. And the bouncer just goes, oh, just wipe yourself off. Hey, you can come back in. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that would never happen. Yeah, yeah. In, in America. Smash it to the sidewalk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It, it's crazy. But, you know, I, I love the country that I'm in before that, that train yeah. starts to leave the station. Yeah, I haven't traveled too much out of the country, but uh, every time I have, it's been, uh, like I said, super friendly. You're always afraid because you know, from, especially coming from New York, everyone's you know tough around here and you know obnoxious and mean and not everyone, but you know generally the, we're a little rough around the edges here, and uh, so that's what you expect and you don't trust anybody and like you know so yeah. you go to these foreign places and like people are kind and friendly and it's like all right why are you so nice like what are you trying to get out of me you know no that's really nice it's like <laughs> yeah well especially in, in active wartime and, and you're a, a military member you're, yeah you know you're, you're trained to you know kind of be on guard and, and stuff like that yeah, but messing with you yeah. I watched, I'll, I'll never forget, I was in um, Brisbane, Australia. And, oh, man, did I have fun there. Um, 
we were it was like three in the morning and we were all just i mean just gone i mean completely gone and these these women were walking around in these sparkly gold bikinis and putting money into parking meters <laughs> and i was like what are you guys doing and they said oh we're the we're the meter maids i was like god good lord they don't have meter maids like you would in america well here they're not like paid by the city or anything they are literally just go around in these bikinis and just for the hell of it put money in people's meters so they don't get parking tickets that's great i'm like my god here they kick your door in yeah, yeah they hide behind a tree and as soon as the meter kicks <laughs> off they take a tree just wait till, you, wait till you get in your car then you're leaving without a car yeah that's awesome oh man yeah it's fun to see all the different things that go on in different cultures and you know uh it's, it's amazing just, it's cool i, I found a, the biggest my takeaway the furthest place i went was buenos aires argentina and which was an awesome place if we get a chance to go that's an awesome place to go food and wine and steak oh my god it was awesome but um Everyone was super friendly, oh, but man. they take life first and work second. We take work first and life second here. So you're absolutely right. Their their number one goal every day was to hang out with their friends. And you go to a restaurant at eleven o'clock on a Wednesday night. It was packed, and they went to work maybe around ten. And work was like just something they did. It wasn't really their life here. Like work is our life, and whatever time we have left, we hang out with our friends there. They hang out with their friends, and whatever time they had left, they went to work. I just thought it was a whole different like way to look at life. It was, everyone just seemed so kind of happy and laid back and you know less high strung and crazy. It is kind of amazing, like when you when you really think of it. All right, so like um, I'm a, I don't know if you ever follow him, but I'm, I'm a big fan of Tim Ferriss. Okay. Um, he's the I mean he's awesome. He's actually how I, I got turned on to Green Lights. Um, he's down in Dallas, and he wrote the the four hour work week, and it's it's basically that like like spend your life enjoying it you know hang out with your friends and let's be serious as entrepreneurs especially in apex we get more done by 9 a.m than most people get done in a three-day period yeah, yeah so it's it's interesting right but even still it's it's hard for us to get out of that, that work mode yeah. right? especially when we enjoy it yeah. but you know, for me that COVID was a big break for me when I, I couldn't physically work anymore it was like I had to be home and I'm like I kind of get used to this like you know playing with the kids and going to ride my bike at like 10 o'clock in the morning and like you know it's like I kind of like this and then that's actually what made me kind of go full-time real estate is that after the COVID and going back to the office and seven to five sitting at a computer I'm like I don't want to do this anymore like I just want to go out and you know in real estate world I'm working but I'm hanging out with new friends and old friends and you know, we go look at a house and we look at a couple of houses. Hey, you want to grab a drink? And we go hang out and talk about the houses and meet some new people. And all oh, my friends buying a house and yeah. we go hang out with them. And it's like work and have fun at the same time. I, it's, it's so interesting you brought that up. Um, before, before stuff really started happening for, for me in this playmaker method, um, excuse me, when COVID hit, right? Like a lot of people were panicking. I mean, I think everybody was panicking. I don't care if you're on the left or the right. You were just like, what the hell's going on? Yeah. Um, and when I saw like everything shut down and this is before I started my company um, or no, it's not before I started my company, before I got full time in my company. And, and I was like, everybody's going virtual. And I sat there and I was like, this is going to change everything. Yeah, totally. and, and I kept saying, I kept saying I was on Facebook. I was on LinkedIn everywhere. I said, I said, COVID is going to set business ahead by 10 years. Yeah. Force everyone and, to go to sure Zoom enough. and go to, yeah. And like, you know, we're Here having we a, a, a meeting right now on Zoom, like face to face, yeah. like we're in the same room. Like, you I know, will I say, I, I wish I bought Zoom stock before yeah. COVID. Right. Man. Yeah. And it's become the staple of all this stuff. Right. And, you know, before I would have had to drive to Pennsylvania, we had to drive to New York to sit and talk like this. You know, it's, yeah. You know, it's like the, it's how much productivity can get done, how much stuff we do over Zoom now. And you can do stuff yeah, over sure. phone calls, but it's still something about seeing someone's face and their facial expressions and communication, body language. You know, it definitely uh, changes the game a little bit. And then you can share your screen and what you're working on and stuff, which which helps, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's it's, it's just crazy. I mean, yeah. for for my line of work, for what I did, COVID was great. Yeah. I mean, and I, I hate to say it because it was a big pain in the ass for every other aspect, but I mean, 
I, I gained access to clients all around the world. Yeah. You know, and, and my, my big thing was, um, my big expansion was Clubhouse. Okay. And Clubhouse lasted for all but about 13 seconds. Is that still even a thing uh, right now? Is that still... I have absolutely no clue. I was on it a little no bit. And it just became such a time suck. I'm like, I don't need another time suck, so let me bail on this, you know? I'm not, I'm not kidding you, Brian. I was in a room. Um, it was like the first room I was ever in on Clubhouse. I had no idea what the hell I was doing. And somebody brought me up on stage, and it was a big name. Uh, um, very, very big name, but I, I'm not, I'm going to omit it here. Uh, but let's just say he's known for being quite the shark. Um, and <laughs> I'll let all you figure that out. Uh, and he was in the room and I asked the question and a couple of people responded. He responded. Um, and that was it. I, I went back into the audience. I didn't know anything, you know, really big. I was like, Oh, this was cool. I got to ask this guy a question. He gave me some input. Um, and the next morning I had messages from all around the world, wow. like Malaysia. I, I mean, just Australia. I got hooked up with a coach in Australia. Who's doing really big. I got hooked up with a celebrity hypnotherapist who works with like Drew Barrymore. Wow. Um, she's became a great friend. And again, clubhouse lasted all but 13 seconds, yeah. but that was like the moment where it was like, you need to be on your game because you have no clue when something's going to happen. Yeah, that is true. And that, that was it. That is true. All, all day long, I yeah, I would say the reason I'm successful in real estate is I keep an ear open and I'm always ready because I always hear that person, oh, wait, what do you need? You need a commercial build and I got you. Oh, 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 you're you getting married? You need a house? Okay, got you. Oh, you know, yeah. someone passed away. You need to help get rid of that house, so let me help you. And then I hear friends to friends talking about, do me a favor. If I can help them, I'll help them. And it just like... All my leads, all my stuff is my influence, my sphere of influence. It's like, just because awesome. I keep that ear to ground, you're always ready. Always, always got ear to ground, always, and always have real estate on your mind. I, I coach my team that. I said, I need you doing at least one hour of real estate every day so that's fresh in your mind. So everything you think about is real estate. Like, you know, I had friends that want to open a restaurant up. We just about to sign a lease on a restaurant because they were talking about a restaurant. I'm like, well, I can find you a restaurant. Let's do it. You know, I've couple friends like that. I was sitting at a bar one night and my friend that has a restaurant was like, I'm looking to open another restaurant. I said, okay, let me, let me see what I can Let's find. Do it. Like, boom. Within a month, I think it was about a month later, boom, we signed papers on another restaurant. Like just I'm sitting right. at the bar, listen to what he said. What do you need? How can I help you? You know? And I have a contact that I got to introduce you to. Uh, I met him a few weeks ago. He does, he runs a company that does uh, VR and augmented reality specifically for real estate. Oh, wow. And he's got, even realtors here are selling homes without the buyers actually stepping in them. Okay. And it's, it's exploding. I mean, I've done exploding. that with FaceTime with a lot of buyers, you know, especially in COVID times and, or sometimes, you know, they're working or out of state. Just recently think, I had one, they were in, that, uh, yeah, they were in uh, California and yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Are you there? Think, FaceTime. Boom. All right, what do you think? Oh, show me the kitchen. All right. Show me the bathroom. Show me this. You know, we do the whole, you know, walk through the house, you know, Imagine, imagine the possibilities if you could do that without having to be the one that walks through your, the house. Yeah, yeah. Like it's, it, I'm not kidding you. Uh, the good friends of mine, they used it, and I don't know where the buyers were from. They were from out of state. They never stepped foot in the house, and the realtors never stepped foot in the house. It's awesome. Yeah. It was all done on Oculus VR goggles. But yeah, it's 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 crazy. You know, you just you never know what's going to happen. That's that's yeah. what happened with me and. Uh, selling power. I was at a pharmacy getting my wife meds and my phone rang and it was from West Virginia. And I'm like, I don't know anybody in West Virginia. Why? I was like, ah, I'm staying in CVS. Why not? I'll answer the phone. And they didn't try to sell you a warranty for your car. <laughs> Those calls <laughs> make me nuts. Warranty. The warranty's coming out. So a guy called me the other um, day and I'm like, do you really get any action out of this? Like you, you're bothering everyone in the world. Everyone I know hates you guys. He goes, yo man, I get tons of calls from this. He's, he starts arguing with me on the phone. It's so funny. It was great. Oh, that, that's the best. Yeah. I, I had a great interaction with the, the Grant Cardone rep once, but uh, that's a story <laughs> for another time. Um, yeah, I, I answered this this West Virginia number. And like I said, I'm sitting in CVS waiting on meds for my wife. And it's this guy with this thick, like, Austrian accent. And he says, Kyle, I'm not even going to attempt to do Austrian accents. <laughs> he says, Kyle, this is Gerhard Schwantner from Selling Power. And I was like, nah. Nah, somebody's, somebody's yeah. punking me. Ashton Kutcher's coming out of the pharmacy or something, right? 
Right? I was like, oh, okay, yeah, Gerhard. And he goes, no, 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 it really is me. He's like, I read your book. And then he said my book name. And I was like, oh, okay, this is kind of cool. And then I was like, wait a minute, this is really Gerhard Schwantner, like the owner and founder of Selling Power. And he says, I want to put you in the magazine. I want to interview you live. And I was like, fuck it, sure, let's do it, man. Okay. It sounds good. And if I wouldn't answer my phone, I would have never had that opportunity. Yeah, yeah. At least I don't think. Maybe he would have sought me out. I'd like to think he did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a constant battle for me. I get so many calls on my phone. I try and answer them all. But then when they come back, if they're out of area code, it's tough. It's like, this guy's trying to sell me a warranty. And then like sometimes you answer it. It's someone from out of the area code looking to move to New York. And they're like, which doesn't happen that often. But I've had that where the I've answered it. like, yeah, we need a house. I'm like, whoa. The worst part is the 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 spoofing numbers, right? Yes. Like they're able to call your area code now. Yeah. yeah. And that I hate. I I get so angry. Yeah. I'm in the middle of something. I stop to answer my phone, thinking it's a client or something, and it's oh, I want to sell you this. I'm like, ah, oh, stop, no. Like, no. I, I <laughs> As a sales coach, I I just want to be like, look. All right, I'll, I'll tell the story, your grand card story. All right. So, oh, I'll never forget it. I was sitting down. I was working. I answered it because they spoofed the number. And it was, oh, this is so-and-so from Grant Cardone. It was literally like, I was like. You got me. Oh, yeah, first time you got, you got me. me yeah. Right? yeah. Like, I knew I shouldn't have bought the damn 10X planner. Like, I knew it. <laughs> and, uh, and he said, how would you like to learn how to sell better than you ever thought possible? And I was like, all right, dude, I'm just going to have fun with him. Yeah, right? let's go. What do you got? Like, you can teach me how to sell. He says, yeah, man, not everybody knows how to sell like us. Yeah, you, you definitely need some sales training. I was like, oh, man, I think you're right. Like, I, mean, I don't know how to close anybody. He's, oh, listen, just for $1,000, some ridiculous price, you can join the Grant Cardone, blah, 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 blah. And I said, I got a question. He goes, oh, yeah, Kyle, what's that? What's that? You need some sales tips? I was like, oh, my God, this dude. Like, if I can kick him in the nuts through the phone, I'd do it. <laughs> and and I, I, said, I said, no, I said, do you know what I do? And he goes, no. I said, I'm a sales coach. I said, I own a sales training company. <laughs> and he goes, oh, uh, okay. So you, you kind of know what you're doing. I was like, did, did you do any research before picking up the phone and calling me? And he goes, no. I said, I'll tell you what. I said, Google me. And he Googles me. The first thing that came up was the selling power article. And I just hear him go, oh, okay. Well, hey, man, let me know if you're interested in anything. Click. <laughs> That's great. Oh, oh. I, I, I was so mad. As soon as I saw 717, he said, it, I'm from Grant Cardone. I was like, you son of a bitch. Yeah. You're I mean, down in Florida. That stuff makes me nuts. I mean, so I'm a relationship guy. Obviously, my, my thing here, real estate built on relationships, right? I I used to network a lot. I've told the story. Um, and actually, I, I kind of got back into the same group again because I'm just curious of how it's evolved. I was with this local networking group. And every time I went, it was all these people, multi-level marketing, jamming business cards in your face. You know, refer me for this, refer me for that. I'm like, I don't even know who you are. Like, I'm not going to refer you. Like, like, let's have a conversation for us. So I got so I, turned I off by it that I was, I was like, I don't want, you know, like, I was going to all these events and I was like, this is just like not worth it. The, the quality of people I was meeting were just these like, you know, real just hack people, no kind of training, no kind of manners, skills, anything. Right. So I was like, all right, this isn't really, but it taught me a lot of what not to do. Right. So, um. Anyway, yeah, so, uh, no, it's, yeah, so we, it's um, oh, what you get? So, oh, hold on, I gotcha. All right, so, um, yeah, so I was going to all these events and everything like that. I learned this is not what to do. So now when I network, I don't even pull a card out of my pocket. Like, we have a conversation. Who are you? What are you about? Like, if I like you, then maybe I'll say, hey, what do you do? Or, you know, hey, maybe we can connect in the future. Or, you know, this was a great conversation. Let's continue this further. That's how yeah. you network. Not, oh, here's my card. Well, you should we refer get one me. name. You know, it's you only got one name. Yeah, that's the way I, I look at it. You know, yep. I, I don't want it, it sounds so cocky and, and ridiculous, but I, I, I'm at a level where like a lot of people locally are kind of like, like, oh, that's Kyle Slaymate. Right? I, I walked into a seminar um, last year and somebody was like, that's Kyle Slaymaker. What he's, what's he doing here? I'm looking around like, where is he? Yeah, that's right? funny. I was like, what am I doing here? I don't have a single <laughs> idea. Right. Um, so I get people wanting to do the, the collaborations and, and stuff like that. And it was a good lesson to learn the difference between somebody who wants to collaborate and somebody who wants to ride your coattails. Mm -hmm. And 
That's that's why I'm so 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 picky. I'm like exactly. Like, I don't I don't give business cards to everybody. Yeah, exactly. It's just if I like you, you'll get my card. I don't just give out cards. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of times yeah, then they call I, you for stuff exactly, too. Yeah. Like yeah, it's like now you have my number. Now you're gonna call me for a warranty. <laughs> yeah exactly if you come up to me and i can just smell like like commission breath yeah or yeah, like, oh. or like you say stuff that's like, like and honestly goes against my core values yeah. i'm just like yeah, yeah whatever. like yeah. I, i'm i gotta go buddy see you later yeah yeah, yeah i don't have time for that but that's a class that's, just me. that's really a class in itself is how to network properly you know how to build relationships oh, yeah. first and you know you make friends people are going to give you business if they like you but people are just going to give you business for no reason you know, just because you gave him a business card and the card's cool looking, you know? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I know, awesome stuff, awesome stuff. What uh, what kind of sales were you in? Like, what, well, obviously you got tons of sales experience. What did you sell? Uh, man, um, I things. started out car sales. Oh, okay. Uh, I, sold, I sold Hondas. That was my first sales job. Uh, I sold everything from water softeners, which sucked, <laughs> to telecom for the biggest telecommunications company in the in the world i'm sure you can figure out who that is okay. uh, lines with shamancast and uh, i've done medical equipment medical shoes i i god i couldn't tell you everything i've sold at this point wow, that's awesome sorry. um and then like i said it my i just kind of realized like i was making all this money for other people i like teaching let's let's do it myself yeah i love it i love it no, that's, that's awesome. Car sales, I think, is a big one. I, I sold, I bought and sold cars from like 14 on. I still do. You know, I buy something, clean it up, and, and, and sell it. And it's listen, it's fun. It's fun, yeah. It's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I used to sell junk cars. Under a thousand was my specialty. I did these buying for 300. You know, this is back in the 90s. You know, buying for two, 300, clean them up, and sell them for 995 special. You know, and uh, oh, I, that's cars. perfect. It was. Uh, I did a lot. I did one a week. It was good, but. You learn a lot about sales and dealing with people and, you know, answering their, uh, their objections, you know? So. Well, it's one of, one of my favorite moments in, in car sales. I, I can hear my baby upstairs screaming. So, oh, okay, so um, I know that feeling. My, I'll never forget. So I walked in, this, this guy, like just wanted to haze the shit out of me. And he did like <laughs> nonstop. He was just like, rah, 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 rah. I was like, I'm going to fucking get him. I'm, I'm gonna get him right finally one day i had enough and I, I figured it out so i walk into my my sales manager's office brian and i said i'm gonna go out and i'm gonna put joe's car on craigslist uh are you guys okay with that and and they just looked at each other looked at me and went yes yep you gotta, you gotta do it awesome. right because he drove a honda so i was like this is perfect so i went out took pictures all around this car opened the car up i took pictures of the interior right <laughs> It was it was perfect. Blacked out the license plate, put it on Craigslist. Um, it was like a brand new record. I put it for like twelve thousand dollars, <laughs> right? Just enough to, to like people know it was a good car, but low enough to know it was a good deal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I put his cell phone one, and I I go into my manager's office. I say, I did it, I did it. And they pull it up, and they're like, Oh my god, this is amazing, right? <laughs> so so all of a sudden you see Joe just walking around the dealership. Hello, Joe. Yeah, we got accords. Yeah, I got I got an accord. Well, Twelve thousand seems a little low, but yeah, come on in. I'll see what I can do. Right, <laughs> click, right, and then and then like every two seconds, it's funny. he's so confused. He, he's thinking That's he's awesome. gonna have the day of a lifetime, right? Finally, finally, he figures out what's going on, and he just looks at me, and I go, I "Guess you'll stop messing with me now, huh?" Is that a Doyle rules. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh my god, it went on for good, at least 40 minutes. That's His awesome. phone was just blowing up. But, oh, that's oh, that's awesome. That's I do. Awesome. I, I had the most fun in car sales. Uh, cars are the best. I mean, uh, oh. Yeah, there's tons of money to be made in it. We used to have a lot of fun. I was selling a pickup truck one time. It's like a 79 Dodge Power Wagon. I think it was burning oil like crazy. It was like a $900 truck. But I mean, for a work truck, it was awesome. But And you couldn't yeah. kill those trucks, but it was burning oil. But so what? You just added oil once a week. Not a big deal. And, uh, Smoke's blowing past us as we're sitting there running. My buddy's standing there. He goes, is it burning oil? I'm like, yeah, not at all. My buddy almost threw up. He, he lost it. He started laughing so hard. He's, he's like, I'm like, get out of here. You're going to kill my deal. The smoke's blowing past us. And I'm like, no, nah, it doesn't burn the oil. <laughs> I, I had one. There was a, I'll tell one more story before I got to bounce off of here. Um, the, the owner of the dealership, um, 
and he's still a good friend of mine to this day. He thought it would be a good. I, I hope to God he hears this. I hope to God he does. <laughs> he uh, he bought these things called called rim blades, right? And it's literally just like this tiny piece of PVC tubing that's like colored. Oh, and it just yep. goes around the room. Yep, yep. Right. So nobody bought these damn things. Nobody wanted them. And they put them on in a cord. Uh, it was a two door cord coupe with this like electric metallic blue. Nobody would touch this damn car. Nobody. They would walk by. And I'll never forget it. He goes, thousand dollars to anybody who sells that, that damn car with those rim blades, right? And this guy walks in with his with his wife, young couple, and I looked at my buddy and I said, I'm gonna sell that car. And he goes, No, there's no way. I said, I'm gonna sell that fucking car. Watch. <laughs> you watch me. I'm gonna sell it. So I walk up and do my thing. And I see him looking at it. I see him. I was like, Oh, oh, oh yeah. Him. Oh, it's him. gonna happen. <laughs> right? Right. And he goes, he's, I really like that accord. He says, I said, Yeah. I said, you, you like the color? He goes, Yeah. And he's and there's things on the wheels. And I said, brother, I promised you that if you buy this car, you are going to be the only one in town that has those. <laughs> right. And I look, I can hear like in my manager's office, like they're like scream laughing. Like they couldn't believe it. And the guy goes, all right, let's do it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and I, we, he, he buys it. We get it ready for him, and then the owner comes out and he goes, "You did it, and you you sold it at full pop." I was like, "Yes, I did." Limited edition, man. Because <laughs> how'd you do it? I said, "I told him you'd be the only one in town driving around with your stupid product on it." <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I'll never forget it. That's uh, awesome. All right, awesome. I'll Listen, let you go. Brother, the baby's crying. Uh, just yeah. What's your details of your event? Let's do that one more time. And how can we find you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, the event, Slay Your Life 2022, Las Vegas. Uh, it's in Nevada. If you don't know if it's in Las Vegas or where Nevada is, I, <laughs> probably not the event for you. No. Um, but Hilton Garden Inn, December 2nd and 3rd. We've got three levels, general admission, VIP, platinum. We've got a beautiful lineup of speakers. It's going to be a ton of fun. The website to get tickets is live. It is slayyourlife.phonesites.com um and of course you can reach out to me directly facebook brian knows i'm on facebook all the time so yep. that's how to do it and brother i greatly appreciate being appreciate on you. we ride at dawn awesome. you're gonna finish it and that is incredible you are a stronger man than i am yeah yeah we took 75 hard to the next level it's a different kind of hard <laughs> different kind of hard. listen i was on i was on round two you, just, you saw it i was on yeah. round two and yeah. then i just Yesterday, I was like, mm. yeah. I don't know. And then you got yeah. Sonia is finishing phase one and diving into the cold water. I did phase two while I was doing a ride, and I, it was like I barely made it through because the ride's long. You know, it's it's you know it's at least an yeah. hour on a bike, and then you know I got it. I was doing it in the cold, and then to do the second workout, I just run out of day, and I was just completely exhausted. The time I did the thirty days phase two, I mean, like literally, I had nothing left of me. I couldn't get my head off the pillow. I was like. Shh. You know, I was like, right, I can't do any more of this. I got, I got to finish this ride first before I do that. But, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I'll miss you in Dallas, brother. But I'm glad you're going to go to MDM. MDM's going to be a blast. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yes, awesome. sir. And we'll hey, see you Wednesday lot, on the call. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Every Wednesday we have a group call together, so uh, it's awesome. We inspire each other every week and kick each other in the yes. butt. It's good. So. Yeah. All right, but take care. All right, care. bro. Appreciate you. Have a great night. All right. Everyone, thanks for joining again for another episode. Uh, we're booking spots for upcoming episodes. So if you would like to be on the show and talk about who you are and what you do, uh, reach out to me. We're going to book out a little bit further into the future. It's every Monday night, 8.30. We do it live, so uh, there's no retakes. Uh, we talk about whatever comes up. Nice loose format, and uh, we get to know who you are and uh, what you're about and uh, how we can start some fire in each other's lives in the world. So thank you for joining. Fire starts for you. Go out and inspire someone in the world to uh, do better. And while you inspire yourself in the process. So everyone, all right, put your head on a pillow every night knowing you're making the world a better place. My We Ride at Dawn 365 is coming to a close. We are on day 335, or 336 today. So we're coming into the home stretch. And uh, with some 30 days left. So uh, it's been an adventure. 
They can follow my group page, We Ride at Dawn 365 on Facebook groups. Uh, I share my messages there, and you can catch all these episodes and my morning messages of We Ride at Dawn on my Facebook, on my uh, YouTube channel, Brian Lewis Realtor. Go on YouTube, search Brian Lewis Realtor, it'll pop up, and you'll see all these past episodes of this show, and listen to them, and subscribe, and you'll also see all my morning messages. There's 336 of them up there now. Uh, get some inspiration in your life. All right, everyone, I appreciate you. Have a great night, and uh, see you soon.